We're now going to start. Um, as you can see, I'm standing on something so I've got good access to the neck. Um, I'm using these clippers. Um, these are the Walt Adler clippers. Um, really like them. They do a really good job and they're quiet, as you'll find out when I switch them on. Um, I'm going to adjust the blade and I'm going to start at the bottom of the neck and I'm going to work my way up, okay? Mm -hmm. And when I indicate, I want a bucket of feed so the horse can stretch down so I can get right down close to his neck. Okay. So we switch the clippers on and away we go. How often do you normally have to do this? Um, I usually do it, um, it depends on a horse's confirmation. Um, if he's got a weak neck, then I will do it probably um, two weeks before a show. If he's what I call very crusty, then I will do it the day before a show. Right. Because obviously what I want to do is to give the horse as much top line as possible. And I use these small clippers. I know it takes a bit longer, but when you've got a winter coat like this, you don't want to chop into the hair. Sure. And if I use a big clipper, I'm going to chop into the hair. And once the coat comes through, I'm going to be minus that bit of colour, because obviously the colour changes where you clip. So as I say, it will take me a little bit longer than it would do if I was using a larger clipper head. Mm -hmm. But there is madness, or just so there's method, to your madness. method in my madness. Okay. Now, it doesn't just have to be um, a show hog that is, is hogged, is it? Anybody no, not at it? all. Uh, you can hog anything. If you happen to have a cob that perhaps has got sweetage or a horse that's got sweetage and he is very crusty then it's quite useful to hog him because obviously you're not then fighting with the continual breaking of the hair and as you can see he's well used to being done Good boy. as I say it does take a little bit longer because he hasn't been done for some time and uh, he is quite thick in his hair but you can see what we're trying to achieve and with this I can actually grade the hair into the neck and it does give a really nice finish and you're going up the side of the neck okay with the clipper at an angle because you don't want to dig it in and then chop the hair out through here okay so we just run over that And if you've got a horse that has got that real, those real sort of divots through here, mm -hmm. if you get a bit of feed, and perhaps if you just go yeah. and hold the bucket down, you'll see how the horse stretches its head down. And now you can see how much easier it is to get to the bottom here. You see that? Because mm -hmm. it's not standing up against me. So I can get right down into this hair through here. So it just takes a little bit longer because we want, I want to be careful I don't damage um, any of the coat that's going to be coming through. I think he's quite happy for you to take as long as you oh, need. <laughs> as long as he's eating, he's absolutely fine. But you can see how it just stretches down through here. Yeah. And you're going to get the, the little what They all want to eat now. They're all jealous. Show ring, then. Would you be marked down for not having this done accurately and neatly? I'm sorry, but that really <laughs> because he can't have any food. I didn't hear any of that. I said, would you, um, when you're in the show ring, would you lose marks for, um, for, for these sort of things for turnout if it was a little bit long? Do the judges like, look for a specific? No, you wouldn't lose any marks because showing isn't about marks, but it's the overall impression. And when you go in the ring, the judge looks at you and he thinks, I like that horse, I don't like that horse. And how it's turned out and how it's presented is, is really, really important. Uh, it could be the difference of winning a class or being third or fourth. So, you know, attention to detail is, mm -hmm. is really important. How long would it take you to prepare a horse for a show? Um, well, bearing in mind that I'm feeding and schooling them all the time, I've got the body shape that I, hopefully, that I want. So it's a case really of um, either, most of my horses I've said earlier live out, so it is a case of 
either getting them in in the morning and washing them off, bearing in mind they've probably been fast the day before, um, and then popping them up in the lorry and away we go. If they're horses that live in, um, and if I've got a very early start, I'm quite lucky because as you notice, we've got stalls. Mm -hmm. So if we've got, I don't know, I've got to leave at four o'clock in the morning, then I will actually get the horses ready the night before, um, get them all bandaged up and, and almost ready to box, and I'll keep them in the stalls and mm -hmm. keep the droppings picked up. And then in the morning, I can just go out, feed them, attention to the last bits of detail, pop them up in the lorry and away we go. Great. Okay, so as you can see, job done. So we finish finished now. Um, we'll brush the clippers off, get rid of all the excess hair, give them an oil so that they're ready to go next time. And I always like to just run the things through. And how do you know when to change the blades? When they don't clip anymore. Literally, when, they just <laughs> literally, when I'm it. pushing and pulling through the coat and they're pulling, then I know I've got to put new blades on because they're blunt. Okay. Um, but uh, always if you're clipping, I mean, obviously not with these clippers, but do make sure the blades don't get too hot. Just put your hand on them and just hand test them all the time and just check that they're all running properly. Remember, keep them well oiled and keep your blades clean Brilliant. because if you don't, they won't clip and blades are expensive. Okay, and that's okay. how you hog a lane. Absolutely. Thank you.